A summary, a conclusion. In brief, let us touch upon all the points that we discussed during this session. We first understood bills of exchange. What is a bill of exchange? A bill of exchange is an instrument in writing containing an unconditional order signed by the maker directing a certain person to pay a certain sum of money to a certain person or to the order of the person or to the bearer of the instrument. A bill of exchange is also stamped. A revenue stamp is affixed and it is a legal document. Of course, it becomes a valid bill of exchange only when it is accepted by the person on whom it is drawn. So in a bill of exchange, we have a drawer, a maker, the person who makes the bill of exchange. Say in our example, which we began from the beginning, X made the bill of exchange. X was the creditor. X was the person who had sold the goods. X is the drawer, the person who makes, who draws the bill of exchange, the drawer. The bill of exchange contained an order to Y. So Y was the drawee. It was drawn on Y. Y was the drawee. He is the person who is required to make the payment. Therefore, he is the payer. It is possible in a bill of exchange to have a third party besides the drawer and the drawee. That is, a third person could be the payee. X could give an order to Z to pay. Sorry, X could give an order to Y asking Y to make payment to Z. In which case, Z is another person, a third person who is the payee. So in a bill of exchange, we could have three parties, the drawer or the maker on the one side, the payer on the other side, the drawee or the payer on the other side and a pay, a different person to whom payment is made. Similarly, what was a promissory note? A promissory note is an instrument in writing containing an unconditional promise to pay a certain sum of money to a certain person or to the order of the person. This is also stamped and is a valid legal document. <clears throat> but there are only two parties to a promissory note. One is the maker, the promiser and the promisee, the person and to whom the promise is made. He is the person who will receive the money, <clears throat> the payee. We discussed the features of the bill of exchange. We discussed the features of a promissory note and also the distinction between the two. The bill of exchange is normally drawn by the creditor, by the seller, while a promissory note is drawn by the buyer, <clears throat> by the debtor. Bill of exchange is an order to pay. Promissory note is a promise to pay. A bill of exchange usually has three parties, could have three parties. A promissory note has only two parties. Of course, both a bill of exchange and a promissory note are negotiable and therefore can be endorsed to a third person. In case of dishonor, notice of dishonor has to be given by the holder of a bill of exchange to the drawer of a bill of exchange. But in case of a promissory note, such notice of dishonor is not required. The bill of exchange and promissory note is governed by the NI Act 1881. We also touched upon a foreign bill, which is nothing but a bill which is drawn in one country but payable in another country. Then we went into the accounting transactions. <clears throat> the different accounting transactions. 
depending on the different situations. What are the different situations? Once a bill is drawn and is accepted, <clears throat> it is treated as a bill receivable in the books of the person who is to receive the money. It is a bill payable in the books of the person who has to pay the money. Bill receivable is an asset. It is a receivable. It is a personal account and it is represents, bill receivable represents the account of the debtor from whom money is to be collected. Bills payable is a liability, represents the account of the creditor to whom payment has to be made. Once a bill is received, is drawn and drawn, accepted and received by the drawer, the bill may be held till maturity, the bill may be discounted with the bank or the bill may be endorsed to a creditor. The entries very simply in case a bill, when a bill is accepted, the entry would be bills receivable account debit to data. If it is held till maturity and it is honored, then the entry would be <clears throat> bank account debit or cash account debit to bills receivable. If however, this bill is dishonored, if the bill is dishonored, then the entry would be <clears throat> debtor account debit with not only the amount of the bill, also noting charges to debtor account debit to bills receivable with the amount of the bill to cash with the amount of noting charges which were paid. What are noting charges? Noting charges are charges paid to the notary public. Notary public is a public official who records the fact of dishonor stating the reasons for the dishonor. A small fee has to be paid to him and that is called noting charges. These noting charges are expenses in the books of the person who is responsible for the dishonor. But the person who actually makes the payment is the person who presents the bill for payment. So this is if it is held till maturity. Next option, it may be discounted with the bank. Bill is received, bill receivable account debit to debtor. It is discounted with the bank. So the bill is handed over to the banker and the bank credits the person's account. So the entry would be bank account debit with the amount of the proceeds, discount account debit with the discount, which is like an interest for this period of credit to bills receivable. On maturity, when the bill is honored, no entry needs to be passed here because the transaction is between the bank and the debt. <clears throat> it may be noted that when a bill is discounted, the bill no longer, there is no bill receivable account as such and does not appear as an asset in the balance sheet. However, Bills discounted is shown as a footnote. It is a contingent liability and is shown as a footnote to the balance sheet. The third option is that the bill could be endorsed. Before I go to endorsement of a bill, in case of dishonor, of a bill which has been discounted with the bank, the bank would present the bill for payment and it would get dishonored. The bank will immediately take the money from the draw's account. Therefore, the entry in case of dishonor of a discounted bill in the books of the creditor would be 
debtor account debit with the amount of the bill along with noting charges to bank with the amount of bill plus noting charges since the bank would also take the noting charges from the drawer's account. When the bill is endorsed, when the bill is endorsed, that is given transfer to a third person, the entry would be third person account debit, say Z's account debit to bills receivable. If the bill is honored on maturity, no entry needs to be passed. But if it is dishonored, we have to reinstate the debtor, reinstate the creditor. So the entry becomes debtor account debit to creditor with the amount of the bill plus the noting charges. We also discussed the accounting entries in the books of the debtor where it is called the bills payable. When the bill is issued, when a bill is accepted or a promissory note issued, the entry in the books of the debtor would be creditor account debit to bills payable. On maturity, the entry would be bills payable account debit to bank. If on maturity it is not honored and payment is not made, then the entry would be bills payable account debit with the amount of the bill. Noting charges account debit. Noting charges is an expense in the books of the person responsible to make the payment. So noting charges account debit to creditor with the total amount. Since both the amount of the bill as well as the noting charges are now payable to the creditor. This was in brief the sequence of the accounting transactions. We then moved on to compute the tenure of a bill, the period of a bill, to compute the date of maturity of a bill. The date of maturity may be two months from, a partic from the date of the bill or it could be so many days, 60 days from the date of the bill. Computation, when it is in months, and in days is slightly different since when it is in days, we have to actually count the number of days. The tenure of a bill may be from date of the bill or maybe <coughs> bill after sight. If it is after sight, it would be in case of a bill of exchange from the date of acceptance of the bill. In case of a promissory note, it would be from the date of presentment of the bill. <clears throat> Besides the fixed expiry period, there are other kinds of bill called a bill at sight or a demand bill. These bills do not have days of grace. Any other bill, that is a bill which has a fixed expiry period, three days of grace are added to arrive at the actual date of maturity. But in case of a bill at sight, there are no days of grace. The moment it is presented, it has to be paid. We then understood what is renewal of a bill. When a bill has to be renewed, the old bill is cancelled and we have to pass the entries for dishonor and then pass new entries for a new bill. Usually, when there is renewal of a bill, there is also an interest element, interest for the new period. Since the creditor does not get his payment immediately, he is likely to charge interest for the remaining period. Next, we understood a retirement of a bill, which is nothing but payment on a bill before the date of maturity. When payment is thus made, the debtor is entitled, the payer, the debtor is entitled to 
as the interest element for the early payment and that is called a rebate. It is an income for the payer and an expense, a discount expense in the books of the payee. <clears throat> we also discussed accommodation bills which are bills raised accommodation bills are bills which are um, prepared to raise finance. They provide short term finance. Sometimes two people, two or more people may raise bills on one another to raise short term finance and share the proceeds. The discount charges are shared in the same proportion as the proceeds are. Bills for collection. When bills are sent to the bank so that collection is made on the due date, they are called bills for collection. They are not sent to the bail, a bank for discounting but they are sent so that bank can arrange for their collection on the date of maturity. The, the, when, when bills are sent to the bank for collection, the entry is bills for collection, debit to bills receivable. When money comes in, it's bank account debit to bills for collection. If money doesn't come in and it is dishonored, then it becomes debtor's account debit to bills for collection. And finally, we also said that if a business house has a large number of promissory notes or bills of exchange coming in, then a day book may be kept for recording such bills. The day book could be a bills receivable book where all the details of the bills receivable is maintained or a bills payable book where all the details of the bills payable are maintained. This is similar to a day book like a purchase day book or a sale day book which, in which credit purchases or credit sales are recorded. Posting is done periodically. Total of the bills receivable is debited to a bills receivable account and individual accounts are credited. Individuals accounts are credited. Similarly, the periodic total of a bills payable account is credited to the bills payable account. The periodic total of the bills payable book is credited to the bills payable account and individuals accounts, accounts of persons are debited <coughs> individually. With that, we would have covered the entire chapter on bills of exchange. Thank you.